will die. There we go. Okay. All right. So land school. Um, I just want to go over a couple quick tricks, ticks, tips and tricks and efficiency things that kind of kind of help you. Uh, the first thing is if you've never used land school before, how do I get there? Um, you're going to email Kevin. After you email him, he's going to send you a link. You click on the link, and then after that, there's going to be a button for you to sign in with Google. So hopefully that's pretty pretty simple. Um, if you need any help, you can always ask me, but I just want to make sure I don't know how many of us will have never used land school before, but that would be the process of using that. All right, the next thing, um, when you go to land school, they're going to give you this 40-second video that basically goes through everything that I'm going to go through right now. So that's it's pretty awesome. It's basically just 40 seconds of what happens at land school. So this person is going to go through everything I am. So if you want to go and watch somebody go through it, through it faster than I am right now, then go back and do that. Um, I'm also going to get into some ideas and some tips and tricks of how to make this a little bit more efficient for you when you're actually like a, a giving an assessment or giving something. So that's there if you need that. The Next thing is you want to sync this with your Google account. So then I know some of us have done this, but you go and you click on the three bars after you get there, and then you sync it with your Google, and it's going to bring in all of your Google Classrooms, which is really great because then you don't have to give your kids and put them in different rooms. You have them all right there. Then from there, here's, here's really awesome what I've done, and I'll show you an example. Um, I click on the menu button, which is this one right here, and then I go to the group view. And from there, you can actually make different groups based on what your students are doing. So, for instance, if I had an active, because maybe some of my kids are at hybrid, and so they're at home and they're not actually doing what, uh, what I want them to, or they're not on their computer, I, I make different groups based on what those students are. So if I look at what that looks like over here, okay, here's my land school. So I have this these groups right here. I can see... Here are my kids that are not active, and here are my kids that are active. And if I want to do, I just click and drag, and I can move that kid down there. Just makes it easier for me to kind of organize and see the kids that I'd like to see based on whatever I think they're supposed to be doing from there. All right, we'll pull this over so we don't mess with this branch too much. The last thing, or not last thing, the next thing is pushing the website to the students. You have an option of you can push it to certain ones, you can push it to all of them. So when you click on this button right here that has a little up arrow, you're going to be able to push the website. So instead of you being on Google Classroom and saying, here, go to Google Classroom and click on this, you can actually force them all to go to a specific website by just clicking on this little uh, up arrow and then push to all and then type or paste the, the website in and then click on the submit button and it's going to send them all or force them all to go to that website. And then you can also just select, if you see there's a little check box up here, I can check and I can only have a couple. So maybe... I have my kids working in groups, and I want certain kids to go to this part of a, a document, or I want certain kids to go to this Google form, or certain kids to go to this gizmo, whatever it is. I can actually force them to go to, to different things based on that. The next thing I can do is if my kids are not doing what I want them to be doing, I can blank all their screens. So if I click on this black button right here, I can blank all their screens, or like we've done before, um, I can blank certain kids' screens. So if I go back and I just select the two kids that I want to blank because maybe they're not doing something appropriate or what, not what I just want them to, I can blank only their screens. Or if I have kids in class that are doing a quiz and I want to make sure that they're not using their computer, I can blank that. And then whenever I think it's appropriate, I can unblank certain kids' screens or I can unblank all of them by selecting all of them based on whatever I think is, is best for them. Uh, this one I really like, and I know it's it's difficult to use sometimes, but I think it has really good purposes. You can actually limit the website that students go to. So if I click on the menu button on the top left or the settings button, I go to web limiting. I can add certain websites. That means that these are ones they can absolutely not go to if I block websites. Or if I click the allowed specific, specify websites, I can type in whatever websites I want them to go to. So if I know in class I only want them to go to these three websites, I can do that. Or if I have them doing a web quest and I know they're going to be using this doc and these six different websites, I can do that. I mean, I can limit those uh, based on that. That is a, an entire class setting, so you're not going to be able to select students in that. Um, so that's going to go to all of them based on that. Or sorry, I'm, I lied. I, it's going to be able to select. Once again, you have to select those things. I will warn you to watch out because if you do that and you don't have anything selected, it's going to block all their websites because I actually did that the other day and that was super fun for those students to not be able to do anything. Uh, the other thing that I think a lot of people don't know about is you can actually message your students and you can message specific students. 
So if I, I'll pull mine over to kind of show you. So in here and here's, I know that, you know, maybe, oh, it looks like Dosh is not really doing what he's supposed to. I can click message and I can send a message to the entire class like hello or hey guys or why are you on that screen or please start to four minutes. But I can also select, instead of selecting the entire class, I can actually send a message just to one student. And I can send them a message like, hey, I don't think you're supposed to be on that screen. We're taking a quiz. What's going on? And then they might say, oh, I have this. I, I can go to this website based on my IP or whatever it is, and you can kind of have that conversation. So you can send message to all of those. Um, this this slideshow, like I could have went through and showed you. I just wanted you to have this as a kind of resource to go through and, and remind yourself on all the things you can do on Land School, because I think it's a pretty good tool. And I also think it's going to be good next year, even when we go back 100% and have no online kids at all. Wink, wink, hope, hope. Um, but we'll see what happens. And then finally, thank you guys all for coming. And like I said, if you have any questions, we'll talk about that and I'll open it up. But if you have any other um, need, let myself or another coach know. So I'm going to go back to the meet quickly and see if anyone have any questions. Molly, Lynn, Jessica? Um, do you know, I guess, sometimes when I'm using Land School, I'll have kids who are in class and they're signed into their Chromebook, but it doesn't show up on my end. Is there a way to fix that? Do you? I don't know if that's more of a Kevin question. No, the, um, they there is a like a world hack that some, not very many people know, but some okay. people know that they're trying to fix and basically block using our web filter. So they're working on that. Like they just figured that out like last week. Like what was actually the problem? Okay. So that's it. Some of them, if they restart their computer, because some of them don't have it installed yet, that's another thing. But those, oh. those are the two things I've heard so okay. far. So thanks. Yeah, but don't tell any kids that you can actually turn it off. Right. You know, no, I would not do that. Yeah. All right, Molly Lynn, you guys all good? Um, I've never used this and I've been thinking about it. So that's why I decided to like jump into this just to see you talk about it a little bit. And um, what I'm wondering, what seems to me would be my hang up would be trying to watch a screen while I'm trying to also teach kids. And I'm just wondering if you've heard from people, whether that's, you know, like how <laughs> easy or difficult that is. I think most people use it when they're not live teaching to watch those kids because of that, because otherwise you're going to be stuck. There's no way around it. You're going to be stuck to your computer yes. unless you have a because you're going to have to have to be seeing that. Um, but then that's why that those I think I haven't heard very, very many, but that limiting of websites is huge. If you want to use it in that aspect where you don't really want to watch them, you can limit it. So then that way you kind of still watching what they're doing. When you're not watching does that make sense okay okay yep all right thank you okay all right all good well thanks for coming have a great weekend and i'll see you guys in august <laughs> see ya